That's it. Thank you, man. Thank you. Y'all know his name? Hey, on Mac, ladies and gentlemen. Drop. Come out the scuffle without a scuffle. Puff, puff, bro. I don't huff though. Damn. Yellow diamonds up close. Catch a sunstroke at your front door with a gun store. Woo. Knock, knock. Who's there's how it won't go? Doing Just the jungle. So have the utmost. Texas AM in maroon. It is basketball time in Baton Rouge. The tip won by Angel Reese. This is Van Lip. We'll check the starters for you in just a moment for the Tigers. Van Lip kicks it to Reese. Open but doesn't shoot. Goes baseline. Tries to work low. Goes up with it. And a jump ball is called as uh, Reese was quickly contested defensively by Lauren Ware. 6'5", she's a red shirt junior, but you don't always see a lot of that size as Angel Reese. Rogers, Koulibaly, a transfer from Auburn. Jones, Barker, and Ware, the starting five for Texas A&M. And this is the same starting five that Texas A&M has used in every game this year. It's a bit unusual to have that kind of consistency. LSU with Johnson, Van Lith, Williams, Reese, and Morrow, the opening quintet. LSU has used seven different starting lineups this season. And this particular lineup has been on the court most of the time. Still looking to get on the scoreboard, and there is the first bucket. A pass in. LSU has missed layups early. Lajay Johnson gets to the rack, but can't score with the right hand from the left side. And that's Warren Ware again. They're trying to figure out how to shoot over 6-5. Rogers snaps it down to her teammate for the lay-in. 4 nothing. First bucket for Ware. And LSU in nearly a three-minute drought to open the game. Here's the lob down in traffic to Reese. Puts it on the floor. Comes back down. There's contact. They do not give up a lot of free throws in a game. The Aggies themselves are making just over 12 and a half a ball game, but opponents are making less than 10. Meanwhile, Angel Reese has attempted 118. That leads everybody in Division One. So, as we talked about already, as Lauren Ware has impacted three or four possessions already by herself, Lynn, can they use ball fakes and spread it out to get themselves to the line? against? A and that's more than anybody else in the country. Pull up jump shot with some faith to it. Doesn't quite get there by Barker. Williams can tie or take the lead with the three. It's run down by Reese. Snaps a pass to Morrow and scores from the left side. And found Morrow, who was recognized before the game for snatching her 1,000th rebound. Look at that spin move inside. A powerful move. Aisha Koulibaly. That's her first bucket. I'm not sure Koulibaly was so smooth on that move. She didn't sneak in an extra step that didn't get called, but she made it look good and was able to get two for the Aggies. Johnson penetrating. Skits to a stop. Gives it to Reese. She'll take the shot and nails it. Looking around and then finally offered the shot and drew the bottom of the net. Well, that defender you're talking about, too, is Lauren Ware. She wants to stay on the inside. We'll see if Reese does that again if it starts to pull her out away from the paint. Six apiece. LSU warming up after a slow start, going scoreless in the first three minutes. And Barker loses the dribble on the six apiece as we slide under the six-minute mark remaining in the opening period in Baton Rouge. Van Lith leans over the dribble. Guarded by Rogers. Van Lith gets it down to Reese, and she's open for 5.25 to go into the opening period. Morrow guarding, and that one is drained from deep, but not deep enough for three points, as Janaya Barker from Marietta, Georgia, now has her first bucket. And let's see if this is going to count. It is. That's going to be Barker's second here in the first, what, almost five minutes. Here's another look. Just one solid dribble. Ducks that shoulder in with the body contact, but you see why Barker gets up. She thought it was an offensive foul, dipping that shoulder. Without flailing that arm and more of a lean instead of just a, a throw like that, they call it on Barker. That's two quick ones on her. She's averaging 13 points a contest. Morrow is averaging 18 and a half with nine and a half rebounds. She's a very good free throw shooter. 83.6% on the year. A three from way back. Rolls out. Offensive rebound. Reese contesting. 
and got in the way of Lauren Weyer, and here comes Van Lith. This is Morrow on the trail, handoff to Johnson. Reese calling for it down low, but Johnson's going to take it to the left side. Misses with the left hand. Reese is there in traffic. This has been a heck of a start for Reese. Eight points, five rebounds in the first quarter. Kick out for a three ball, and it nestles in. Now, that's only her fourth made triple of the season. She is not known as an outcourt shooter, but oh. she got that one to go. Yeah, she's only taken 17 attempts before that one. Van Lift spinning. And just gets it away from a five-second call. In fact, she did not. Hey, by the way, you mentioned with that Colorado game, you know, was, they were 20, LSU was one. Coming into tonight's game, LSU was seven. Colorado's up to five. A three ball is on the money. Rogers. And I mentioned they kind of got back to Lady Tiger pace. Now hit five of six. Last year, Poa will check in as the first substitute for LSU. Van Lith for three. Open and nails. That left Van Lith wide open. What a terrific pass by Johnson. But the layup does not score from where she was wide open and just left that one. Morris bowls from Georgia. Comes into the game for Texas A&M. Reese working hard to defend Kula Bali. And that's going to be a shot clock violation, that long heave. Poa lobs it down in traffic. Good catch by Reese. Puts it up. Draws the foul. 13 turnovers a ball game. Just by listening to the sound, Reese bags both free throws. And 10 points early in the first quarter for her. She's got six rebounds, 10 points, and six boards for Reese in the opening period. Van Lith cannot defend the driving Hilton, but the shot is high off the rim. Here come the Tigers the other way. Fade for Flage. Got it. They're 15, 18 feet away from the basket. Straight up with that. No need to fade away from it. Green over Poa. Misses off the rim. The rebound bounces deep to Reese. Six to shoot. Three to shoot. And that will come up short from the corner. A uh, heave from 40 feet misses off the window as time expires. She gets three rebounds in the next three quarters. She'll have her 42nd double-double as a Lady Tiger. Johnson, Reese, Williams, Poa, and Morrow on the floor for the Tigers. Rogers, Hilton, Kulafali, Jones, and Ware for Texas A&M. That lob was intended for Reese, but it had no chance, and Hilton makes an easy steal. So a turnover for the Tigers and an unforced error. Rodgers dribbling around the three-point line, seven on the shot clock, and a drive and a strong shot, and it's put back... Texas A&M, 13.2 turnovers per game. That's second best in the league. Still at six here. Two minutes into the second quarter. Morrow with the rebound. Poa brings it up. Snaps it down to Reese. Feeds Williams. Three ball up and in. McKay. Williams can be a streaky shooter, and she by far leads LSU in converting three-point shots. And if the Lady Tigers are able to find avenues like that to dribble, they'll be able to play that inside-outside game. And Leah Del Rosario, LSU's tallest player at 6'6", a freshman from Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. And that lane violation cost LSU a point. Van Lith is back in the fray as well. He wheels around, stutter dribble, takes it down the left side, puts it off the window, and scores. Just tough as nails, huh? She yep. just puts her head down. She knows how to get to the basket down the lane, up and in. Tough drive by Haley Van Lip. And a scoop is good by Rogers off the right side. Van Lip uses the Del Rosario pick and will take the three and nails it. And the other one out court. We've seen her do this a couple of times in her career so far in Baton Rouge, but we definitely saw it at her previous stop in Louisville where she can get on those scoring streaks. That was her 15th 
converted triple of the season. It looked like she was going to try to draw a charge. She averages probably one to two a game. Certainly one a game. From Cincinnati. She's only been there eight times now. For the... Williams takes right, dribbles left, fades, fires, and drills. Rogers lobbing it down. And it's lost out of bounds as Koulibaly. Ball moving a lot on body movement. Van Lith tries to slice it over to Reese. And that was well anticipated by the Aggies defense. And then on the other end, a little walk. At the free throw line, straddles it. Morrow step back, deuce. Last couple of times, the Tigers have been a little bit yeah. off kilter offensively. This is going to go for Rodgers, and she's fouled. Rodgers has six points in this quarter. Reese grabs her rebound. She's approaching a double-double in the first half. That was rebound number eight to go along with ten points. Make it number nine to go along with ten. LSU battles for it. Blase Johnson eventually comes up with the tip ball. Well, you can just see the intensity. The bodies hit the floor. There's something you don't often see in uh, a lot of the schedules in preseason. Oh, no, absolutely. That's going to be a technical foul. Yep. That's going to be a technical foul on Joni Taylor, who was showing her jumping ability when she used to be a player. She might be close to getting thrown out if she doesn't watch it. Well, they gave her a chance to go back to the he tried. to the huddle, yeah. and then she just kept coming on. I thought it was going to be six on five, Texas A&M against LSU. Yeah. She's dressed like their uniforms, and she could have blended. They wanted a foul on Anissa Morrow, and when they didn't make the call and the ball went the other way, Joni Taylor found herself six, seven feet out on the floor. Watch. Oh, this is when it's already gone down. And, in fact, that's Janiah Barker pulling her back. Remember, Barker has two fouls. They're pulling. He's, she's pulling Taylor back so she doesn't get thrown out. And eventually it had to come, and Williams will drop the first free throw in. Yeah, there was a block out of Anissa Morrow, probably a good six, seven feet from the basket. And when Morrow was fighting for it, trying to go over the back. Not so in the second quarter. She's got nine points, and they've all come in this period. Oh, she snaps a pass right into the hand. Here come the Aggies, loping down, and the lob pass is in the hands of Weyer. Van Lip puts it on the floor, takes it down the right side of the lane, comes up and shoots with the left hand, but pronounces it like the country, India. And she'll shoot it right here and nails it, 11 points. That little spark plug guard has been effective in the first half against the Tigers. Offensive rebound by Reese, who else? The first half double-double in... Uh, Approximately, what, 16 minutes. And now 12 points for her. K.K. Green is in the game. Number four in Maroon. She's a guard. And look at Rodgers again. Can anybody get in the way of India Rodgers? She has been spectacular in attacking the much taller Tigers. Morrow takes a pass and misses the layup. Why? Where for three? No. Williams, big rebound. LSU will let her shoot that all day. She's only taking two attempts for that before that one. Del Rosario with the left hand. Get off the bench at the last stoppage and gets her first bucket. Barker on the run. Shoots the floater and scores. The number of points that Texas A&M gives up in a game. And we've got a foul away from the ball. She now has the only two points in the first half off the bench. The last game and a half, three bench points, all by Del Rosario. Parker takes an ill-advised three, and the ball is ripped out of the hands of a couple of defenders by Flage Johnson. She scoops up a wild shot. There's contact, and she's going to go to the free throw. This will be free throw attempt 12 and 13. LSU has already gone north of that. The Tigers have been a really good free throw shooting team as a unit. There's an eight second difference between the clocks as we close out the second quarter. 44-35 LSU. Seven seconds on the shot clock. That's tipped away by Del Rosario. And a whistle. Get the rebound and that's because Ware, while she looked good on that free throw, she made them both. LSU will have time now 
as it works it into front court with eight seconds to go. Williams at the top. Williams kicks it out left side. She'll take a three. Offline, Del Rosario taps it to nobody, and this first half is over. It was frenetic. It was physical. Texas A&M had an early lead. LSU came roaring back. LSU is being outscored in the paint in this ballgame, 20-14 to 14 by Texas A&M. Only twice this year have they been outscored in the paint. The opening loss to Colorado and their last game, which was a win in Oxford against Ole Miss. This will be the third shot of this possession. Jones hanging, shooting, and scoring off the window. 44-39. LSU by five as Texas A&M tries to cut into the lead in the third quarter. And Reese snaps the pass. You just get it. You hope your teammate is cut. Timing play, and it worked beautifully for the Tigers. My, my, my. In a variety of shots, and LSU has not been able to effectively keep her from tallying points in this game. 46-41, the lead is five again. Van Lith will try to make it eight, and she does. LSU by eight. Van Lith is holding her ground, and that's going to be an offensive foul. Well, you ran into her. That was what the problem was. Van Lith stopped right there. Clearly an offensive foul. Williams. And that's going to be an offensive foul. Yes, it is. In officiating, and they have been consistent doing it. All season long and more. And Texas A&M. Flaugé Johnson got caught on the wrong side of Koulibaly. Pass went. Flaugé went up top. They went the other way with the pass. And all she had to do was spin and go to the basket. Reese, one dribble. Gets close to the rack. Can't score. Two Aggies going down, bumping into each other. Where to Jones. She'll take a three. On line, but a little long. That's tipped by Williams. She's prancing in the front court. Scores or misses with the left hand. It's put back in, but there was a whistle. 86.4% rattles in the first one. But when you hit 29-30 straight before you finally miss one over a span of over. And, of course, made her mark and, and then some, winning four gold medals. She played all together on five USA basketball teams from 21 to 23. And threw the volley out in front. And Texas A&M. That sluggish start to this third quarter for LSU. Similar to the way we saw them start the game in the first quarter. Johnson scooping and... In the third quarter, Morrow with a very strong rebound after the jump shot miss. LSU's lead is 10. Morrow down to Reese. Fakes left, spins right, draws the foul. Morrow to Reese and Reese. Reese at the line is just for the record tonight. I was going to say she hadn't missed a free throw, but she is... Seven for eight at the strike. Johnson gets it down low. And that left-handed attempt does not come close by Parker. And Parker has not had a good night so far for the Aggies. Remember, she had two early fouls. She was frustrated, kind of mentally checked out of the ball game, and then physically got checked out. And Reese will go right back to the line that a lot of players can't to try to get her hands on those rebounds. And right now, 15 points. Number one in points per game, free throws attempted and free throws made. But opponents for Texas A&M are making basically nine a ball game. LSU's almost doubled that up, and we still have... Morrow, another one of those excellent free throw shooters, 83.6% on the year. Number four in scoring, number 12 in rebounding last year. Rodgers tries to dump it low. It's tipped. And the outlet pass down to Reese, and... Reese had it knocked away by the hustling. LSU has scored nine straight points, and Reese 15 points, 14 rebounds, five assists. That's sneaky. Very nice slice between a couple of defenders and lay it in. Texas A&M's gain is certainly Auburn's loss. She led the Auburn Tigers in points, rebounds, and seals the last two seasons. Reese scores again for Morrow. And now Bowles gets by Reese, lays it up, misses. Reese there for the rebound, and it's poked away, and a foul called on Barker. Meanwhile, guess who's back at the free throw line again? You put your feet in the shoe trees. 
to fit them. I wonder if there's two imprints of Angel Reese's shoot. There you go. One of the last 12. It's a drought, scoring drought for the Aggies of more than two minutes. And a nice move. Shot clock at eight. Poa at the top. Kicks it left side. A long one in the air. A long one is good. Boy, Kim Mulkey was quarterbacking that entire play. Hand up on Haley Van Lith. Win to go. Told Michaela Williams to start making the move. And that's why Kim Mulkey is out on the floor. You know, with all the sass and sizzle of women's basketball these days, you're looking at uh, a person in Morrow who just quietly comes and does her job and then some every night. And has adjusted her game to match up with a player and Angel Reese, where the two of them playing at different schools last year. The tops in the country battling on the inside with points and rebounds and now figuring out how to do it together. And both of them averaging very well throughout the season on a consistent basis. Weyer blocks it out of the hands of Del Rosario. And Hilton is dribbling around, pulls up, takes the shot, no good. Rebounded by Barker, and there's a foul defensively for the Tigers. Barker at the strike. We mentioned that uh, Texas A&M came in with a well-deserved reputation for playing defense. LSU tonight has scored nearly 20 points more than Texas A&M has allowed per game coming into this contest. Goes back to what I was saying earlier about did you just feel the intensity? And Victor for the moment, or through three quarters of this game, the number one offense Offensive foul. Talk about dirty work. That's a lot of the dirty work that doesn't get a lot of attention when you're laying your body on the line drawing that contact. And she, 22 times this year, has drawn offensive fouls. We had questioned before the game, who wins this battle? The number one offense against the number one defense in the country? Right now, by a whopping margin, it's the number one offense. Yeah, LSU's pulling away here in the second half. Now it's 73 points. That's the most A&M has given up all season. Williams with an over-the-shoulder blind pass. It's tipped out to Van Lith. Her three won't go. Barlow puts it back in. There is a foul. And Poa and Van Lith go through some sort of routine. I think that foul is going to be on Barker, who stepped out trying to jump. If it is, Van it's, her, it's her fourth if it is. Here's another look. It's Michaela Williams. And then watch this one-handed sling out to the wing. And it is on her. She just kept running towards Van Lith, didn't jump, but then ran right into her as Van Lith was coming back down. So give Van Lith three opportunities at the line. Well, the way Reese is hitting passes to Van Lith like that, Morrow, a few minutes, but she's getting dangerously close to a triple double. And now 14. AM on average had given up less than 49 points a game coming into this one. LSU has 76. mention that's the most allowed Reese with a season high 17 rebounds now Morrow will go to the line Barker fouls out and Sydney Bowles replaces her Bowles is out of Lafonia Georgia and she has played a couple of times off the bench tonight see now that was that was fun you don't see it a lot but you saw Barker there School's not even in session, and the students that have come and packed this place were going left, right, left, right, ready for her to sit down. She grabbed the water bottle, stood in front of the chair, and then took a couple of quick left, right, left, right, and looked at them like, come on, come on. And then she sat down. She smiled. They all gave her some applause. That's fun to see. Sure, sort of like the Simon Says show we saw at halftime. Yeah, exactly. I mean, she's having a good time. You're down 25. At least she's enjoying the moment. Texas A&M is having a difficult time lately finding points. Even Rodgers has slowed down a bit. Look at this. It almost went. Rodgers with a sleight of hand to move as she was flying through the air. Trying to make that possession magical. At halftime, She's already above her season average, but just four now in the last two coming from the launch. More than her season's average of 11. And just above what LSU averages for the season. Puts it on the floor, beats her defender, and then loses the dribble on the baseline. 
Here comes Koulibaly. Koulibaly with a strong move. She scores with the left hand. And now this player who started Auburn before she came to Texas A&M drops the free throw to complete the three-point play. She's got 16. Look at Flage Johnson take the lane. LSU by 20. Six minutes and some change to go. We'll check some other SEC scores in just a moment. Well, you're up 20, and the player we focused on at the beginning of the game who came in averaging 20, and the SEC is only sitting on eight. Yeah. Yeah. Weir throws it away. He was out visiting with them, welcoming them, asking how everybody was doing. It goes back inside after Texas A&M hopes that Koulibaly is okay. She's certainly the important player they'll need in the SEC. No question about that. And Texas A&M is able to get inside for the bucket. LSU's lead is 20 with 4.23 to go. Van Lith, stutter dribble, stops in the lane, kicks it tomorrow. This is Johnson. And she skips to a stop, and that is a travel. Rodgers for three. Got it. LSU. The five players trying to figure out how to guard one who wears number one. They can't do it. Three snaps it out for an open 14-footer. And it's uh, and didn't get it there. That's knocked loose by Williams as she batted it out of the hands of Ware. Williams fakes right, dribbles left, and uses the... Taking a lot of three-pointers, haven't needed them. Van Lift knocks it loose momentarily. Rodgers is able to get it back. Almost the average is about four and a half three-pointers, so they're above their season average. That's Michaela Williams who lost it. That's Jones that got a hand in there and deflected it. And then Van Lift with the deflection has got the breakaway. Johnson, one-on-one, -on -one, lays it in with the left hand. 16, Van Lift, 14, and Johnson, 10 for the Tigers. 75 seconds to play. LSU is going to win its third SEC game. And it's 16th in a row. target in the first game since then LSU has learned its lesson has gotten better and better and it's gonna be fun it helps us do this and enjoy it each and every time we do it it's been a pleasure indeed it has matchup in the SEC that, that student line might already be forming for that it game. might it might Rogers quick release got another one oh she's been Besselman is in the game for LSU wearing number 14 in white a crowd favorite That's Izzy Besselman defending down low, and we've got a whistle. <laughs> LSU by 17. This could be the last possession. Velez leans over the dribble. So the Tigers making some late substitutions as Angelica. Velez, the 5'7 freshman from the Bronx, New York, will just dribble it out. And LSU is on its way to its third consecutive SEC victory to open the season. It's done here in Baton Rouge. Tigers 87, Aggies 70. Sluggish start for these teams to start this ball game, but then when LSU found its rhythm...